A few videos ago, I told you that we are going to learn folder navigation in a later video. Now that we have made all of this progress, I am finally going to show you how to link your HTML pages and images that are contained within different folders. But first, remember when we were adding an image to our website and I told you to save your image inside the same folder that your resume.html file was in? I want to take a second to explain that we wouldn't normally do that. It is bad practice to save your image files in the same folder as your HTML files, or any other file type for that matter. If we were following good coding practices, we would make different folders that contain the different file types. That is what I will show you in this video. By the end of this video, all of your images should be in their own folder. All of your HTML files, except your index.html, should be in their own folder. When I teach you CSS, we will put all of your CSS files in their own folder as well. Your index.html file will be the only HTML file that is not with your other HTML files. Remember when I told you that the web server is a computer that is always connected to the internet which stores your files? The server has logic that looks for an index file and then makes that your default home page. The web server doesn't have default logic that tells it to look inside of any folders for that index, so unless you provide it with that logic, it will not look for it inside of any of your folders. If you put your index page in a folder with your other HTML files, it won't be able to find it and you will see an error when you try to navigate to your website. We don't teach you in this course how to overwrite your server's default logic, so just remember to keep your index file by itself. In other words, keep it where it is and don't move it. Now that we have that out of the way, right now we only have a few files. But if this were a real website, the amount of files that we would be using would grow and it wouldn't be feasible to keep all of them in the same folder. It would make sense to move them to their own folder so that all of your files of the same type would be together and easy to find. That is why I will be showing you how to create and navigate to your folders. Open your file explorer inside of Visual Studio Code. If it is not already open, you can click this icon that looks like two pages. If you click it when it is already open, it will hide your file stack and will give you more space on your screen for your code, so it's helpful to hide it sometimes. If it is already hidden and you want to see your files or add new files or folders, you will click the two pages icon to show it. Make sure to have it showing for this next portion of the video. Right click down below your files and select New Folder. Alternatively, if you have any of your files currently selected, you can click this folder with a little plus icon to also create a new folder. Use either method to create a new folder. Call this folder Images. Now you will want to click and drag all of your images to be inside of your image folder. I only have one image, but if you have multiple, you can hold down Control on Windows or Command on Mac to select multiple files, and then with the Control or Command key still held down, you can click and drag them to your newly created images folder. When I let go of my file, it's going to ask me if I was sure I wanted to move my file. Click Move, and now our file disappeared. You can click this arrow icon on the side of this folder if it is not already pointing down for you to see into the folder and you can see your images. Once again, it is sometimes helpful to hide the content of your folders if you are not actively using them to keep this area clean and easier to see the files that you are actively using. Click the arrow to show your file and then click it again to hide your file. Now create yet another folder using either method and call it HTML. We are going to move all of our HTML files except our index.html file into this newly created folder. We only have one HTML file that is not our index, but again, if you created multiple for extra practice, remember that you can select multiple files by holding down the control or command keys and then clicking and dragging them to the correct folder. I am once again going to click Move. Now let's collapse all of these folders and you should only see your HTML folder, your image folder, and your index.html file. I'm going to remind you about the terminology of folder hierarchy. So when I uncollapse my images folder, it is showing this Homer image as a child of its parent folder called images. Same thing for this HTML folder. The HTML folder is the parent and the file inside of the folder is the child. Now let's go back to our site and then we will see this very nice error message, cannot get slash resume.html. This is because it has moved. We moved it to our HTML folder. 
Notice here that it is saying the live server information and then the file name. Let me show you something. This will help you visually see what the computer is doing, so if you are watching this at faster than normal speed, you might want to slow this part down. Okay, look here. Our site is being launched directly from this directory, and then it is looking for our resume.html file. As you can see, it's not here, and the only things that it can see is our index.html, our images folder, and our HTML folder. We know that the page we want to visit is inside of the HTML folder, but the computer doesn't know that. When we double-click the HTML folder, then we can see our resume.html file. So, the computer needs to be given the path to follow to get there. When I click this back arrow, it takes me to the previous directory that contains the various folders for my website. I need to tell my computer to look inside the HTML folder, and then it will find my resume.html file. Click here on your live server address bar after the first forward slash and type in the folder name and then add a forward slash. HTML slash. Great, but now something is missing. Can you tell what it is? Our image is gone, and you can easily tell that it's missing because we used the alt attribute and our alt text came up. Our picture is gone, and it's gone for the same reason that our web page disappeared just now. The browser doesn't know how to get to the image because the path that we gave it is no longer correct. Let's go back to the code and see what we can learn. Okay, our image tag is telling the browser to use the file Homer Simpson with donut file. But as you know, we moved it so our path is incorrect. This next part is a little tricky for a lot of students, so listen closely. The website is trying to find the file inside of the same folder that the website is in. Let's go into that folder and find our website. Okay, so follow along with this part and just watch. I'm going to open up my file explorer and then navigate to the website file. I'm going to click on desktop, then IS201 web demo, and then into our HTML folder. As you can see, there aren't any other files in this folder other than our resume file. Our resume.html file is telling the browser from here to find our Homer Simpson with donut file. I can't see it, so neither can your computer. What we need to do is tell it to go up a level and then go into our images folder. Then we can tell it to use the Homer Simpson with donut file because we can now see it. It might be helpful to some of you to do this for the next few times that you link your various files because you can visually see what you need to do to tell your computer what to do to find the file that you are looking for. Let's run through another example. The file that is running the code is the default starting point of where you will be looking for your file. If we were adding a picture to our index.html file, the path will be different because our starting point is our index.html file, not our resume.html file. So, for example, if I was trying to find an image file for my index.html file, I first find my index.html file in my explorer, and then I think to myself, I will go into my images folder and then select Homer Simpson with donut. That was easier because I didn't need to first go up a level. Let's translate what I just said into code. First, let's visually run through adding an image to our resume.html file. I want to go back to our resume.html file. Okay. I don't see the picture, so I know I will want to go back. The code for this is dot dot slash. Now, I want to go into my images folder, and the code for that is just typing out the folder name after our slash. So in our case, we will use slash images. Now, I want to select my file name, so I will add a slash and then the image name. The slashes help the computer know that it needs to change directories or do something, so you always put a slash between elements. That was a little confusing, so let me just show you. Let's go back to our code. Let's delete this old image path and start over. We know that we need to go back a level, so first let's start off with a dot dot slash. Our code context box is going to pop up and we can then use the arrow keys to highlight images. Next, I'm going to hit tab or enter and then the context box will show all of our image files. I only have one, so it will only show the one, but if you have multiple, you could select your files using the arrow keys and hitting tab or enter like we just did. Now, do you see why it is important to save your file as something descriptive?
When I hit tab, it's going to autocomplete my file name, and now we can examine what it did. The dot dot slash tells the computer it needs to go up one level. Again, this is assuming that the starting point is the file that you are currently working on. Then it says to go into the image folder and select the image file that we have. It's not hard or scary. Students just forget that the path needs to start at the file that we are already in. Let's open our index.html file and let's add another image. You can download and save another image from the internet or you can just use the same one. If you want to practice saving your file as something descriptive and inside of your image folder, I'd recommend doing that, but this video will run too long if I do that, so I'm going to reuse mine. I'm going to create an image tag, and then I will let you pause the video to test your knowledge on how to link your image correctly. I'm assuming that you paused the video or you didn't want to practice. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to walk through visually what we are doing. Go back to your file explorer and find your index.html file because that is where we are starting. Okay, here's my index.html file. Remember that you are starting from the location of the file you are currently working in. I'm just going to say that a million times in this video because it is so important for you to remember that. Since I am adding an image to my index.html page, I am starting from that location. I don't have to go up one level because I can already see images from my file location. I'm going to go into the image folder and then select my image. Let's go back to our code. My src attribute, I'm going to type in i, and once again, it's going to have this highlighted text which prevents my context menu from popping up. So I'm going to use the arrow key to move to the right once and then back to the left so I can start typing again. When I type in m, it will show me images. I'm going to hit tab, and then since I have the one file, I'm going to hit tab again. Use the arrow keys to select the correct file before hitting tab if you have multiple files. We know that this was linked correctly because the computer is auto-completing it. Don't forget to add an alt text attribute. I'm going to copy and paste my alt text from my other file. When we go back to our site, our image comes up. Great. Let's check out our links. When I click resume, that works as expected because the pound sign is just telling it to link to itself and that will always work. When we click the home page, however, we get the error that it cannot find the page. Once again, it is because we moved the file. I'm going to quickly go through this because we've already seen a lot of examples. Scroll through our code that is linking our page to the index and let's think about what it needs to do. Starting at our resume.html page, we need to go back one level to our main folder and then we will need to link to our index page. So let's delete this old path and type in dot dot slash since we need to go up a level. Use the arrow keys and highlight over index.html and then hit tab. The computer auto-completed it so we know that the computer is seeing that file. Let's stop and think where else we need to change our paths. We also need to change them in our index page. Go there, and then we will do the same thing. Pause here and see if you can do it yourself. Okay, we want to go into our HTML folder and then select our resume.html. Let's do that really fast. Let's save and check our work. Some of you may have to close your pages and reload it using the live server button, but if you corrected all of those paths, all of your images and navigation buttons should work.